as well. I promise I'm trying to get as much of me in as possible. Sounds good. Yeah, and I we know it's hard. We've been doing this for for a while. We know how hard it is to get a good a good video. Welcome, Tasnia. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. We have more people this week. Oh, this is exciting. Yeah, super exciting. And that mystery Aaron person, that's just uh, the computer I'm using for just to see everyone's videos. I thought he was joining us. What's that? <laughs> I thought he was joining us. <laughs> Well, we might have a little toddler running about at some point. All right, well, it's a little past seven, so we'll go ahead and get started with some introductions. Uh, so I'm Kristen. I'm one of the ballet instructors, and my I use the pronouns she and her. And then I'll let the other instructors introduce themselves. I'm Jackie. I, I'm another ballet instructor, and I use she, her pronouns. Hi, I'm Anita. I'm a Bharatanatyam instructor and I use she, hers. And then hi, I'm Anjali. Um, I'm another one of the Bharatanatyam instructors and I also go by she, her. Hi, I'm Shruti and uh, I'm one of the Bharatanatyam instructor and I also go by she, hers. Nice. So just a few housekeeping things. Um, we ask that you keep your microphone on mute unless you have a question. And we're gonna try having people ask questions um, just as we go, as we have them, as you would in a class if we were doing it in the studio. And if it, and then we can assess how that is working and how it goes for getting people's feedback. Um, yeah. Shall we get started with ballet? Let's do it. So we'll do about a half an hour each week of ballet, and then we'll do a half an hour of our natyam. So we'll go ahead and get started with Jackie. Hi, everyone. Did you wanna... so just, yeah, so just kind of a quick um, intro to this class. This is going to be a little different than the Thursday classes, if you've been joining soft Thursday classes on YouTube or their Saturday high intensity uh, classes as well, or the HIT training. Um, this is gonna be a technique focused class. So it's, we're not learning choreography or like a dance that's gonna happen. We're gonna be learning the basics and the steps and that can sort of be applied to any choreography or any dance that you do. We're learning about alignment and we're learning about placement and strength. So it's, it's going to be a little bit slower paced probably than what you're used to and very different than those types of classes. Um, it is a drop in class. So, you know, if you like to tell all your friends, have them join next week and you can come and go as you please. But because it's a technique class, consistency is really going to help you grow. So we recommend, you know, kind of best practices that you join week after week. And these will all be available on YouTube. So if you miss a week, feel free to watch on YouTube because it is going to sort of build on top of it. Um, with that being said, though, like, don't be afraid to join if you've missed like a month of class and and haven't watched the YouTube videos, you're still welcome. And we will still answer all your questions. So, you know, feel free to come no matter what. Yeah. So while we're going through these lessons, we will tell you an instructor to pin so you pin someone by uh, double clicking on, so you first you have to go to like the mode where you can see lots of little videos and then you double click on the instructor that we tell you to and that'll make that instructor um, video like large on your main screen. So for the example, for like me and Jackie, like Jackie will be who you watch for ballet 
but I'll be doing um, some talking. So we don't want it to be like bopping back and forth based on who speaks. We want you to be able to see Jackie uh, the entire time. So go ahead and everyone can pin Jackie since we'll be starting with ballet today. Um, and just a little history of ballet. It is a dance style that came out of Europe. Um, there was lots of folk dancing and like dancing in the courts that had like bits and pieces of what we see as contemporary ballet. But it was really the Sun King who was the King of France and his name was Jackie, I don't King remember. Louis the 14th. King Louis, King the, Louis 14th. the 14th. And he's really credited for kind of like putting together what is considered to be ballet. So that's why all of the terms are in French. So we'll be using the French terms with our best French accents that we can muster. Um, and then when I was in college, I learned a lot of like the Vaganova Russian ballet method. So, so, so ballet has kind of been all over Europe. Um, and then Russia had kind of became like a big hub for ballet. And Vaganova was not really well known as a dancer herself. She was a dancer, but she was very well known as a teacher. And she documented all of like the most beautiful things, according to her, that the ballet dancers were doing. And she put together like a seven year curriculum that children start when they're young um, and then do this curriculum up until they're adults and become professional ballerinas or ice skaters or, or whatnot. So we'll be doing a lot of Vaganova um, and then other, other styles of ballet that we'll be, you know, referencing or talking about sometimes are like Shaketti or like Balanchine is considered to be like the American ballet style. He was um, from Russia, then he came to New York and created a school. What else do you have for the history, Jackie? That's it. I think we should get started. Sounds good. Let's do it. So we will start with the basic um, ballet positions. Um, since we're following the Russian Vaganova method, we'll be using what they're called in there. They are sometimes referenced differently in American dance studios. So if you were to take a dance class someplace else, don't be surprised. So first we'll start with the foot positions. So uh, let's have everyone stand with their feet together in what's called parallel or sometimes sixth position. And then on the count of three, we're all gonna clap and we're gonna snap our toes out. Don't try to like yank them further than they can do, just go like a quick snap. One, two, three, snap. So this is where our turnout is. As of now, the goal in ballet is to become like more and more and more turned out, but we don't want to like crank it further than we can because it hurts our knees. We want to start with like a nice, easy turnout. So you can see Jackie modeling, turning the toes out to the side. So this here is the first position of the feet, the first position. Um, to get into the second position, we can take one of our toes and we can point them out to the side. And then from there, you're just going to place your heel on the floor. And this is second position, the second position of the feet. The next position will point again, that same foot that you point before. And then you'll bring the heel back into first. And then you'll slightly cross it over into the middle of the foot. This is third position and is very rarely used. Like very rarely in a class do you use third position um, and never in choreography that I've ever encountered, but we still have it in third position. Um, to get into fourth position, we'll take that toe, that foot that's in front and we'll point it and then lower the heel to the floor. So it's like the heels and toes on each feet are in line. That's fourth position. And then we'll point that front toe again. 
draw it back in, connect the heel with the toe on your other foot, and this is fifth position. So we can do third, fourth, and fifth position with the right leg in front or the left leg in front. Um, most of the exercises that we start with will be in first position. That's where it's kind of like the first year of ballet, typically the exercises are done from. So now we'll go over an overview of the arms. So for the arms, everyone just like do a little wiggle. Just like wiggle everything out. I'm gonna, my view got messed up. I can't, I wanted to be able to see everyone. Oh, here we go. There we go. Okay, so give your arms a little wiggle and then you're gonna touch your your thumb to the knuckle on your middle finger so jackie you'll step close to the camera see how she's touching her thumb to that first knuckle on her middle finger and then from there you're going to kind of just like relax your hands a little bit so you're going to take this like relaxed hands with this like small kind of like detail to it and to, to start with, to train our hands, we will always touch that thumb to the middle finger. And then we're just gonna let the arms kind of like drop down in front of us in what we call preparatory. So the elbows take a little bit of a curve. Your hands are like maybe four inches away from your body. And they just have this like nice, gentle, curve to them like nothing too sharp with the elbows nor are they fully straight and the hands are maybe like the fingertips are a couple inches apart it should be just kind of like a nice oval from your shoulder like across your shoulders down around your arms it's looking really nice for everyone so now you're going to keep your arms exactly how they are so your elbows wrists and fingers don't change at all and we're just gonna raise our hands up into first position. And we stop when our hands are like across from your sternum. So kind of like right where your, your bra strap would be uh, is where they're stopped and that's first position. So then from here, again, leave your elbows, wrists and fingers exactly as they are. And we're just going to open our hands to second position. So in second position, what often happens is people let the elbows flop down and we don't want that. We want the, the shoulders to be higher than the elbows and the elbows to be higher than the wrists and your wrists higher than your fingers. So if you think that your elbows are high enough, raise them up even further. And you should feel there's like definitely a workout kind of along like the backside of your arm. You should definitely feel it burning as you just like stand in this position. And if you feel it burning, that means that you're probably doing second position arms. So from second position, let's bring our arms back into first. So that's where they're, we say it's like you're holding a beach ball. Like there's a big ball in your arms and you just have this like natural curve around it. And then we'll raise our arms up into third position. So again, the elbows, wrists and hands didn't change at all. And now they're just above your head in third position. And then we can just bring them back out to second. We can bring it back down to preparatory just to, just to get our arms back to the beginning. Whew. Any questions about the feet or the arms? All right, we'll keep going. If you have them, save them up and we can, we can answer them later. All right, so we will start our first, so ballet, is always for like a, the ballet is always done like at a bar but since we don't have a bar to hold on we're gonna do it as if we're in like the center of the floor um and you always go through the same like exercises so all in any ballet class 
you're going to start with plies and then you're going to do like batma tandu san batma tu tandu degage you're going to go through the same exercises for every single ballet class so we will just be going through those exercises as well and just adding more and more on week to week the first exercise is a plie so if you are joining today for the first time and have never done ballet before, I recommend that you put your feet in that parallel six position that we had talked about at the beginning. If you've been, if you've had ballet uh, practice before, you can go ahead and uh, bring your toes out to first. So in that turned out position, I'm gonna go ahead and do it in six position for today. Let's take our arms in preparatory. So you're gonna to touch your finger to that knuckle and then have that nice rounded curve. And we'll just do like four slow, easy plies. And a plie is where you bend your knees and they go out over your toes. So they, you don't want them to like, go further in or further out than your toes. You want your knees to be like right on track over your toes and, and Jackie is demonstrating. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Jackie and she'll count us out for uh, our four plies. Okay, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do four count plies. So they're gonna go down two and then they're gonna come for up for two. So we'll do four of those. Okay, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, up, three, four, down, five, six, up, seven, eight, down, one, two, up, three, four, down, five, six, up, seven, eight. Nice. That looked good. And already I can kind of feel my knees like getting warmed up a little bit, uh, which is why ballet can be such a great exercise. So next we will do uh, what's called a batma tandu san. So batma means to beat. Tandu means, oh man, what does to tandu point. mean? Two point. Two point. And san means simple. So typically in a class, you'll hear these referenced as like simply a tandu. Um, my teacher always called them batma tandu san. Uh, so for a bat ma, we will, so it looks like a lot of you guys are rocking that like turned out first position and it's looking like it's going well for everyone. So if that feels comfortable, um, I'll just go ahead and, and explain from that turned out first position. But if that's feeling like too much, or you're feeling any strain in your knees, go back into that like parallel um, first position. Actually, let's do it to explain a tendu, since it might be kind of new, let's just do it from that sixth position. I changed my mind. Okay, so from that sixth position, we can put our hands on our hips for now. You are going, you are gonna think that you want to keep your, your foot on the floor for as long as you can as you point your toe out in front of you. And then you're gonna draw it back in, again, trying to keep your foot on the floor for as long as it can. It's like your foot wants to stay on the floor, even as you draw it out into a fully pointed extended position. And then as you come back in again, it's like, yes, the floor, like that's exactly where I wanted to be. So let's go ahead and do four tendus on the right and then four tendus on the left from this uh, parallel sixth position. And I'm going to watch. So make sure you have Jackie pinned. I imagine you guys all do. Okay, so again, we'll do two counts out, two counts in. We'll do it four times on the right side, and then we'll go right over and do four times on the left side. Five, six, seven, eight, out, one, Two in three, four out five, six in seven, eight out one, two in three, four out five, six left side out one, two in three, four out five, six left 
two in three, four out five, six in seven, eight out one, two in three, four out five, six in seven, eight. That looked great. Now everyone, I'd like you to bring your foot out to that tendu position and make sure that in that working leg, so whether you choose the right leg or the left leg at this point, you don't have any weight in it. So we want to be able to easily lift it off the floor without anything else in your body changing. So in order to do that, you're gonna have to um, make sure your stomach muscles are entirely engaged. Uh, you're gonna have to engage your standing, your supporting leg, your standing leg, your working leg. You're really gonna have to um, get everything going and you're gonna want your to toe to be as pointed as you can. And as we go through these exercises, you'll get a better and better point all the time. Yeah. All right, let's do tendus now from a first position. So the first position adds some complexity because we can do the tendu to the front, to the side, and to the back um, in what we call en croix. En croix because it means four. We go front, side, back, side. So when we do a tendu to the front, you can go ahead, take your arms in preparatory or on your hips, whichever you prefer. You're gonna draw your toe forward and it's the toe is going to end up lined up with the heel on the other foot for going forward. And you're gonna be thinking, so again, no weight on that working leg. And you wanna pretend that there's like a gem on the inside part of your heel and you want to like show off that gem. Like see how Jackie, you can see that like orange part of her sock so well. It's because she's really trying to like rotate her entire leg to show off that gem on her foot, which is also preventing a, a common thing that we talk about in ballet, which is sickling. Sickling is when you turn yeah, see how, see how her toe kind of like turns in? We don't want that. We want the toe to be like flared out the other direction. Not so far that it hurts, of course, but that's the goal. And so if we think about that gem, our leg and foot and hip and everything is gonna be working to turn our foot out and show off that gem. All right, so that's time to go to the front. Tendu to the side, you're gonna uh, point the toe, just like we did to get into a second position. And you're gonna have both toes lined up with each other. And again, you're doing everything to like rotate and show off that gem. And again, you don't want any weight on that working foot. So try like lifting it up a couple times and see what that does to your body and see how you can stay more stable if you engage your core even better. Then we can draw that foot in. And then going to the back, probably it's supposed to end up in line with your heel, um, but that definitely takes some work. Uh, so the toe is lining up with the heel and if you can't do it right now, it's totally fine. I can't either. Um, we can work towards it and you're still thinking about showing off that gem and you're still making sure that there's no weight in that back foot. So when we do tendus on qua, we typically do them to the front, to the side, to the back, to the side, on the right leg. And then if we were at the bar, we would turn around, but we're not. So we'll just go on to the left leg. We'll do them to the front, to the side, to the back, to the side. I see someone does have like kind of a bar set up. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's do a little Batma Tandu San exercise and I'll turn it over to Jackie. All right, so we'll do two again, we'll, or we'll do two to the front, two to the side, two to the back, two to the side, and we'll do that same out for two counts, in for two counts. We'll do that, so we'll do right, and then we'll do the left side, back. Five, 
six, seven, eight. Out one, two in three, four, out five, six in seven, side out one, two in three, four, out five, six, seven, back out one, two in three, four, out five, six, seven, side one, two, three, four, five, six, left side one. Two in three, four, five, six in seven, eight side one, two, three, four, five, six, seven back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven side one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and breathe. Woo! Nice. So it's about time to turn it over. So about time to finish up with ballet. Um, a quick note for next week is uh, typically ballet is practiced in like little leather ballet slippers. Um, if you would like to go to the store or order them online, I guess who goes to the store these days? If you want to order some online, you certainly can. They're just, they're not like the point shoes or anything. They're just like the inexpensive um, leather ballet, like practice slippers. Otherwise, uh, none of us have them and we haven't gotten any. I recommend some socks. And that's especially helpful for doing these tendus and going, you know, further into the more advanced exercise as well so that your foot can like really glide across the floor. Especially with carpet, your foot can get like really stuck um, if it's just like a bare foot. And I think you'll, if you try it with socks, you'll notice a bit of a difference with that. So each ballet lesson ends with what we call a reverence. It's when we show like respect for kind of everything, respect for each other, like the space and time to dance in, respect for the art form. Yeah, however you wanna think about it. Uh, so Jackie will lead us through uh, what's called a reverence and it's how we end every ballet class. And then at the end, we can clap for each other. Okay, so I'm gonna teach what was sort of traditionally done by men and women, but since it's 2020, we're gonna all do both because gender is not binary. Um, so we're gonna start and just know that we'll do this every week. So you might be a little confused this week, but don't worry, next week you'll probably be a little bit better and the week after a little bit better. So we're gonna start with what's called B plus. So you're gonna just put your leg in sort of a tendu, but with a bent leg where your knees are together behind you. And then we're gonna step across, bring that leg back there. And then we curtsy. And then we step across, put that leg here, curtsy, and then we're gonna bow. So we're gonna put our legs in parallel. And we step across, we dig that left foot, we bring the arm up and we bow. And then we step across, we keep that arm there, dig that foot and bow. And you're done with your first ballet class. Woo! Is there anything you want to add, Jackie? No, I think it was a good class. I hope everyone had fun. Yeah, any final questions before we move on? Sounds good. All right, I'll turn it over then. Okay, hi guys. That was awesome. Thank you, Jackie and Kristen. Um, good lesson for today. So we're gonna move on to Bharatanatyam. And myself, Anita, and Shruti will be your instructors. Um, we're going to start by pinning me, just for a little history. And Anita and Shruti should definitely chime in. Um, Bharatanatyam is one of the oldest forms of classical Indian dance. And it originated in um, Tamil Nadu in South India. Um, there's many different types of Bharatanatyam. So actually, myself, Anita, and Shruti, I think we have learned two styles between the three of us. Shruti and I have... Um, majority done Kalakshetra and Anita you've done you want to share yeah so anything else that you guys want to add otherwise since it's 7 30 we'll get started anything else Anita and Shruti 
Okay. And if my internet does go out, I need then Shruti take over. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So we're gonna start with um, namaskaram. So namaskaram is typically think of it as an offering that you do at the beginning and the end of class. Um, it's gonna introduce, I think. We've discussed, it'll introduce a few different things that kind of like reverence at the end of ballet, you'll get num better at namaskaram as you go. The major things that it'll include is a few different body postures that we will additionally also go through slowly and teach our bodies how to do that. And it'll also include something called mudras, which we are hand gestures that we do with our hands. So I'm gonna walk you through those in a very preliminary fashion and we'll do it properly later. But for the most part today, just try to listen along and try to follow the best that you can. If it's not perfect, that's okay as well. And I'll be more so counting one, two, three, four, just to get a hang of it. Okay, so everybody is gonna start with standing and singing. Um, we're gonna start with our hands in this gesture. So you are gonna put your pointer finger and your second finger together with your thumb on both sides and your pinky and your ring finger are kind of up like this. Again, these are all things that we will technically go through later, but just to get a feel of it for today, and it'll be at, it'll be at chest level, which is right about here, a little bit away from your body. And you'll be standing straight with your first two counts. You're going to stand with your right leg first. When we stand in anything really in Bharatanatyam, we do it with intent and with purpose. So from the side, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of a bounce with it, and your heel kind of you want to try to lift it almost like you're kicking a little bit of your bottom right there. So you want to step with the right and then you want to step with your left and that'll be your first two counts. Second, you're going to kind of put your hands, the next mudra, and again, we'll go through this more detail, but it's kind of for right now is like a thumbs up. And then you start with the thumbs up. You guys can go ahead and pin Shruti. Shruti, do you want to walk through the rest? Oh, yeah. You're going to just go around your shoulder stand with the right leg and the left leg. You're going to go all the way around. And okay. You got Anjali back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm back. So we came all the way to the bottom. When we come to the bottom, we're going to be in this sitting position. This is another sitting position that we're going to go through today. So try to best that you can right now. And we'll go through the technique in a little bit more detail. When you're down here, the next thing that you're going to do is you're gonna take your hand and you're gonna put your three fingers and your thumb comes right underneath there and your pinky comes straight up. You're gonna have that on both sides. This is probably the third mudra we did. Again, the first one was this. The second one was a thumbs up. The third one we're really doing is this. And you're gonna to touch the ground, kind of just in front of you. And then you're gonna to touch your eyes. And your eyes, you can close your eyes as, so you don't touch your eyes. And then what you're going to do next is you're going to bring your hands just in kind of a palm, and you're going to bring it all the way above on the top of your on the top of your head. So again, it comes from touching the ground to your eyes to all the way around. All the way around is kind of you point your fingers out to the outside and you come all the way around. Okay, and you join them at the top of your head. Second, again, sorry if your knees are hurting at this point for just the description, you can stand up for a second. You're gonna come here and touch the top of your head and you're just gonna gradually bring it back down to chest level. This chest level is kind of where we also did the first position too and you're going to stand up. Right now, if getting up and down is difficult, definitely don't worry about it. We just wanted to introduce that to you just to show that that is typically what we would do at the beginning of class. Um, and the technique for how to come up and down, we will work with you to get there. So. That is namaskaram. We are going to move on to something called nade, and we'll do namaskaram once again at the end of class. So nade, everybody find a spot in some corner of your room. For example, I'm going to go to this back corner over here. What we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna walk towards the camera. We're just gonna walk in a zigzag fashion just to get you started. When you walk, what you wanna do is similar to the stance before, you want to walk with the bounce. When you walk, when you, walk you want to make sure that your heel touches first and then your foot, foot touches next. Again, heel first to the foot next. Okay? And we're going to do that. I am going to be saying the words Taka Dimi Taka Janu. 
Again, today is the first time you're hearing these words. They will feel a bit foreign. As we keep going, you'll get used to it. Why we say this is in Bharatanatyam and just in general, there's something called Sholukata, which is what we say when we dance. And they're kind of beat patterns. So Thakka, Dimi, Thakka, Janu, you can think of as one, two, three, four. For now, also clap along as we walk. So you'll get an idea of kind of how the beat pattern works. And so that's good, okay. So everyone find a corner. And for this exercise as well, you can keep your hands behind your back. You just wanna make sure that they're not peeking out. You don't want to see those fingers on the side. You just wanna hide them in the back, okay? In three, five, six, seven, eight, and also this walking exercise is meant to just get you to kind of move around. If you end up a little too forward, you can take a few steps back. The same technique applies where you just want to lift your leg and make sure to have that where your heel touches first and your foot touches next. Okay, we're going to try that one more time. A little bit faster. That was just a little slow. You typically would walk maybe a little faster. So come back to any corner or in the back of the room in general. I'm just zigzagging to give myself a little bit more time. So in three, five, six, Seven, eight. Taka di mi, taka janu. 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 Okay. So those are the first two things that we're going to do. We are going to switch over to pinning Anita. And she will walk you through um, in Namaskaram, which we did in the beginning, we introduced some really important postures to do with sitting. And Shruti is going to describe a little bit more of what that body structure should feel like and how you kind of, again, we're not in person right now. In Bharatanatyam, a lot of the posture and technique and style, it's much easier to see. Okay, okay ready? Yeah. But definitely, if you have any questions, let us know at the end and we can help you through it. Um, our goal here is to try to show you best in video, but we understand it's really hard to try to follow along exactly what you see when it comes to some of these postures. So just like Jackie mentioned, for both ballet and Bharatanatyam, definitely let us know. We can help you get along. Okay, Anita and Shruti, take it away. Thanks, Anjali. So I want you guys to pin Anita, and we're going to see like three basic postures in Bharatanatyam. These are the basic steps uh, throughout which like you'll be doing a lot of sequences based on these steps. So the first one is called Samam to just to kind of like stand straight with your feet together. So this is a Samam. And the second posture is actually called Aramandi, which is nothing but your half squats, but typically with your legs like spread out. You don't have to kind of like touch both your legs. There should be a small gap and go as much as you guys can go down. So it should be like a half sitting. You should feel your pressure on your thighs and not on your knees. So if you feel like your knee is paining, then that's actually a wrong position. So you have to make sure that your thighs are feeling your weight and you should actually feel the pain there. The third position is called Mulamandi, which is to go all the way down and you kind of like sit straight. And again, like your heels should not be like touching each other, but there should be a small gap between them. Again, like here, your body should be super straight. There's no leaning forward or backward. You just have to kind of like keep yourself straight. And again, the pressure has to be on your thighs and not on your knees. I hope you guys got it. Okay, let's do it again from like Samam, Aramandi and Mulamandi. And I want you guys to stay in Aramandi for eight counts and Mulamandi for eight counts. And the counts here goes like Taka, Dimi, Taka, Janu, Taka, Dimi, Taka, Janu. So let's go to Aramandi. I want you guys to stay here for eight counts and the count starts now. 
ਤੱਕ ਦੀਮੀ ਤੱਕ ਜਨੂ ਤੱਕ ਦੀਮੀ ਤੱਕ ਜਨੂ I want you guys to go to go mulungamundi go all the way down and again stay there for eight counts tak dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu you can get back to samam how you guys feel the pressure on your thighs and now we'll just do a quick rep of like four counts to go from samam to aramandi and back from aramandi to samam three reps of eight counts so it goes like tak dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu three times at the speed on count of 3 1 2 3 dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu second time tak dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu third tak dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu okay let's do the same thing for mulumandi you go from samam to mulumandi in four counts and get back from mulumandi to samam in four counts again like three repetitions of each so let's begin tak dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu and it's we're going four counts down and four counts up wait right. okay get back to samam four counts down to mulumandi 1 2 3 tak dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu again tak dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu the trick here is like to stay straight because that gives you a balance there's no bending sidewards there's no like leaning forward or backward and your hands have to be like in your side like at the back and your fingers should be hidden as sanjali taught you like during the nada so again like stay straight in the sama and then as you guys go down to aramandi or mulumandi you should feel the weight only on the thighs so basically your lower part of the body works and your upper part is kind of like more like stiff and straight let's do this in the second speed which is takadimi takajanu again four counts from samam to aramandi four counts back from aramandi to samam three reps again let's start on the count of 3 1 2 3 tak dimi tak janu 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 we do again at the second speed for from samam to mulumandi three reps again four counts down four counts up let's begin on count of 3 tak dimi tak janu 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 i think you guys can relax for like 5 10 seconds like and then i want you guys to sit again in armandi the thing that i'm going again and again it kind kind of like and looks simple but it's basically like the most important posture that you guys have to get like to get to the next other who's or steps that we will be teaching in the next classes so let's stay for 10 counts or like say sorry 16 counts in each position without moving for instance when i say aramandi just go to aramandi stay there for 16 counts then i say mulumandi go down all the way down and stay there for 16 counts let's do this as a three reps so that you guys should be kind of like all your thighs should be kind of like feeling the pain and the pressure and it has to kind of like work out let's start from the sama go to armandi position and let's stay there for 16 counts tak dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu go down to mulumandi tak dimi tak janu tak dimi tak janu 
ತಕ್ಕ ದಿಮಿ ತಕ್ಕ ಜನು ತಕ್ಕ ದಿಮಿ ತಕ್ಕ ಜನು ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ಅರಮಂಡಿ ಅಗೇನ್ ಸ್ಟೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಕಾಮ್ಸ್ ತಕ್ಕ ದಿಮಿ ತಕ್ಕ ಜನು ತಕ್ಕ ದಿಮಿ ತಕ್ಕ ಜನು ತಕ್ಕ ದಿಮಿ ತಕ್ಕ ಜನು ತಕ್ಕ ದಿಮಿ ತಕ್ಕ ಜನು ಗೆಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ಸಮಮ್ ಗೈಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರಿಲ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ನಾವು Right. Anthony, do you have anything to add on? No, I think that's good. So, and we're at 7.45, so we'll do Namaskaram to end again. So, um, One quick note, yeah. Anjali, that I just want to add in is when you're, I think Shruti kind of hit it, but when you're doing Ardha Mandi too, it's, you're, she, you should emphasize that you're, you know, they should be straight. And you should really feel like the tightness in your like core and abdomen trying to kind of Well, and I almost think like it's like a straight line. Like this is like a straight line. And if you go here and you're like, your your body should kind of follow like a straight axis. So mm-hmm. I think I want to add there. Yeah, that was a really, really good tip. Um, and one other thing even off of that along the same lines is Namaskaram today, the first thing that you learned is one thing that practically utilizes really what we, the exercise that Shruti just did for us, which was really heavy on our legs, right? Um, the more that you sit, The more that you sit and you uh, keep your back straight, if your knees come in and your back comes and your back comes forward, it's going to be harder for you to get up and it's going to hurt you more. So like should be said at the beginning, if you feel it's on your knees, then you know that posture wise, something is maybe a little off. So again, just keep focusing and trying to put those knees out. Um, and again, and I'm sorry. Well, did we lose Anjali? Wait. Last yeah she was just trying to say like all namaskaram has like all the three postures if you say if you know like when you begin the first two steps it's on samam namaskaram again when you kind of like, right now sorry so yeah then you kind of like go and when you go down you again go to mulamandi so all these three are incorporated in namaskaram and i think the just one more point i think that you noticed um seeing in the video um is that when you're going down from armani to muramandi your feet placement don't change so you should be able to go all the way down and come all the way up so i know a lot of talking but if any questions please don't hesitate to shout them out now if you want to connect like bardanatyam and bali your place in bali are actually your armandis in bardanatyam and you just have to kind of like go down a little more than your plie normal plie because the plie was still here but barnadam goes like your typical half squatting so that's the only difference but when you guys are practicing at home some of the time you can kind of like connect these two right okay we will end one more time with barnadam and then we'll just close today with some closing comments so again you want to take a standing position your right hand and your left hand are going to start like this again we'll go through all of these details but try to follow along today as best as you can is just a little sneak peek you can think about it you want to keep it at chest level and even if you want to stay there just in case it freezes Um, so you want to hit with your right leg. You want to stamp with your left leg. I won't count today. We'll just go through the movements. Put your hand in the thumbs up position. It's going to go all the way around your shoulders, almost like thumbs down. It's going to go all the way down to the ground. You're going to touch the ground. Touch your eyes. You're going to put your hand in two palms. Point those fingers out and go all the way around. then you join them at the top of your head you come back to your forehead you bring it down to your chest and now you slowly come up and again this is utilizing more mundi to samam which is all the way down to all the way up okay that is it for today and then Jackie and Kristen if you guys want to give us some comments yep If you guys have any questions just feel free to ask we will help you with the steps if you guys have anything yeah two minutes any questions from either ballet or bharatanatyam me i have a question yes for ballet when we do the side leg do we kind of tilt i can't do we is that you sanita uh so when we do the i forgot what you call it the That side pointed thing tandu yeah mm-hmm. yeah so do we kind of kind of i don't know lean here because my weight is on this one that's a really good question so i don't know, mean it? am i supposed to be completely straight or is this okay is it this 
Do you want me to answer, Kristen? Yeah, yeah. So it's that's a really good question. So you don't want to lean your upper body. Your upper body should look like nothing is happening in your lower body. So when you bring it to the other side, you want to keep all that weight kind of down in the ball of your foot so that as you get more advanced, which is way long, you could even go up on your tippy toe. So you want all that weight here, but you don't want to be leaned yeah. over. You want to keep this yeah. pulled up. Yeah. And so to do that, you yeah. kind of have to engage yeah. your glute yeah. and all your muscles in your legs to keep yourself pulled up and your abs. Okay. Okay, because I felt myself kind of going a bit over, so that's why. And, and that's okay, especially since it's your first week. Like until you start to gain those those muscles and you get used to it, it's okay that you're going to be a little wobbly, especially if you're like doing it on carpet and you get stuck. Um, but as in time, if you keep coming back and you keep practicing, you're going to start to gain those muscles and gain that alignment and strength. Thank you, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, Jackie, do you want to end for us? Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for joining our first week, our trial week, um, and thank you for bearing with our kind of testing. Uh, we really would love for you to come back next week, tell your friends if you had a lot of fun, um, and tell them to watch this on YouTube if they missed it, because it will definitely help um, next week. And then also check out SAS other classes. So Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Central Time, we have our choreography class. And then Saturdays at 9 a.m. Central Time, there is like a kind of Zumba style class. So you should definitely check all that out. And then um, I hope to see you all next week. Thanks, guys. You know, all of you were wonderful. You talked so well. Good job, everybody. Yeah, thank you guys. It was a lot of fun. Like Jackie said, um, it was a thank you for joining us. And it was a good, you know, definitely um, if you want to type in the comments too, that was another thing. Uh, maybe we can do in future weeks is just right in the middle of Barth and Demon Valley. We can take a quick look at the comment section if you want to type instead. Um, that would also work. I don't think we mentioned that at the beginning of class, but definitely ask us if there is anything. If this feels weird on the body right now, just know that it'll get, it'll feel better. You'll get there and the body definitely, it, it adjusts and, you know, you'll learn that technique. So thank you for training. Also, I've linked the YouTube class here. Oh, yeah. If you want to refer that YouTube. Perfect. Can everyone wave to my daughter? Absolutely. Look, Hazel, they're waving. <laughs> Hi, they're Hazel. Waving. You've been trying to get them to wave this whole time. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, see you guys next week. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.